Hello, let's paint a quiet, peaceful winter forest scene. I am gonna take my big, <laughs> it's a leftover house painter's brush, but you can use any wide brush you have or just use a round brush. And we're gonna, um, we're gonna wet the top part of the, my words aren't here, the top part of the, I wanna say canvas paper and then like the bottom part. So I'm gonna wet maybe to like here, just with clean water, obviously, or maybe that's not obvious. Um, I think I want it to go down a little bit more. I want it to be more like, not quite two thirds, but more than half. Okay, and then the front area right here I want to do also. Okay, so that's all wet. And I'm going to use my round brush because my flat brush is way over there. Um, and I'm going to do a light mixture. I'm going to mix a little bit of indigo. Actually, you know what I'm going to start with? I'm going to start with some yellow. I know. Very clear instructions from me. Here's my palette. You can only see part of it though. And I'm actually gonna wipe out some of what's in here because I don't want it for this painting. Okay, so I'm gonna mix up a combo of, this is some Naples yellow and some, I can never say the name of this, ochre. And I'm gonna do a nice kind of like streaky, across sky kind of like that and then uh, maybe touch in and add a little mix a little pink into it touch that around the edges here and then I should have done this before I'm gonna go grab a penny you're back back all right I'm gonna grab a penny and put it, you can put it in paper towel or tissue, make a little circle. And just right here, I'm gonna remove some of the color from that just to kind of have like a weak sun kind of look. Um, and then around that, I'm gonna mix indigo with um, a little bit of gray and water it down a bit. And my paper is doing something weird right there. Just do a real light wash. And I'm gonna wipe off my brush since I got some yellow on it. Trying to keep this pretty even there. Just let those do their thing. You try to mix them together a bit. My son didn't really take. I'm gonna try that with a paper towel just to have a little bit more clarity about where the sun is there. There we go. And I'm actually, I'm gonna go back to and water down my yellow mixture quite a bit. Just do like a light wash of it down here because this is snow and the snow could have a little bit of that glow. And then I'm also going to do a little light wash of the blue. And I am pulling that up a bit because there's plenty of water to around there. I want a little bit more glow. I don't think that's enough. There we go. And what's happening right here? What is that? Oh, it's probably a piece of who knows what. Can I get it? Let's see. I may have gotten it. I may not have. I still don't know what's happening right here. It's like there's excess. Okay, I'm just trying to mute that out a little bit. And 
Yeah. Let those come together a bit. I'm gonna go back and clear that up. Make that line clearer in a bit. And tap a little bit. Yes, I just took the time to remove the paint from there, but I'm gonna go back in and soften it a bit. I don't need it to be quite that hard. It's not a bright, brilliant sun. It's more of a weak winter sun. And I want that to dry a bit because I'm going to add um, some, uh, I'm having trouble with my words, bushes. Okay, I held that up to my heater for a moment, my space heater. Just, I don't want it to be completely dry, but I do want it to be um, a little bit drier. And now I'm gonna mix up a, it's gonna be a combination of, I'm using gray, indigo, and a little bit of black. If you have Payne's gray, that would be good for this, but I don't have any yet, so. And then I'm using my flat brush and I'm kind of drawing it off over here. And then I'm going like this. I do not have enough color. <laughs> I'm trying to indicate a little bit of bushes or trees back here. There's that piece of hair. Did I get it that time? Possibly. Just a little bit along that edge. We've got a row of shrubs or maybe groupings of trees that are back here. I'll have to go back and clean that up later because it's not uh, as clean as it should be. I'm just gonna tap in a bit more color. Not too much. Tap in some at the base there. I do want it to be pretty soft and it is pretty wet so I should be able to get So here is me giving you permission to mess things up, to learn as you go, to make things look different than the way I or anyone else makes them. There, okay, I'm gonna leave that. What I am gonna do down here is take um, my flat brush, which is completely dry and just try to tidy up that edge a bit, mop that up a bit. And it definitely does not need to be perfect because, um, you know, trees and shrubbery along, along the line of the forest are not gonna end perfectly in a perfect straight line. And then what we need to do is, I'm actually gonna lift some of the color in a couple places just to make it, maybe it's a little foggy back there. We don't know. There we go. Just again, using my pretty dry brush just to flatten out a bit. Okay, now I, this needs to dry completely, completely before we can do anything else. So come back when your painting is totally dry. All right, here is our dried off background. And I have this, this vision of doing, um, up and down trees, not evergreens, you know, like deciduous trees. But now I'm feeling like I want to do some sort of evergreen trees. So I've drawn out some different sort of scenarios and kind of, you could, if, if you had tracing paper, it was, would be better. But I'm kind of like playing around with, I like the idea of this trio of evergreens in the foreground. And then just maybe a little stand of trees back here as well. And then just really letting like the sky and the openness speak. And I did try a couple different things. Like what if we put like a big, big tree in the front and just had some trees back there. Um, 
I guess maybe that could still happen if I don't like the way things go. It, we could have trees on either side like that and then just leave it open, but I don't like that as much. So right now what I'm feeling is something like this and then we will just see what happens. So I'm gonna start in this back area with a little stand of trees and um, and then we'll go from there. So my paints over here, what I'm gonna be mixing up is, I really should have changed my water. I may have to go do that, but we'll see. Um, I'm going to just mix up a um, an indigo. I just grabbed midnight blue instead of indigo, <laughs> it's okay. Um, so I'm just getting a bunch of indigo onto my palette here. And then really, I probably just need a straight up indigo. What is that? Why I have so much stuff going on over here. Let me get it a little more organized. Okay. Uh, I'm going to add a little gray to it. Maybe a little black. All right. So I have this very dark color here. And I'm going to use my number two round and just do the hint. I wish, is that my, where's my other brush? Story of my life, where's my other brush? I don't think this one's gonna work, my snap brush. I might, I may use my, I may use my size zero snap brush instead. I am using that instead. We'll see which one I like the most for this. And I'm just gonna draw out this little, like my, this brush is, does not have a great point anymore. And then just kind of putting in this like idea of a tree. These are way in the back. You wouldn't really see anything very concrete other than knowing, you know, it's a stand of trees. Oh gosh, I have some new brushes on order because it's about to be my birthday. I say I have new brushes on order. I sent Amazon links to my husband and said, this is what I want. And yes, I know, I know I would prefer to buy from my local art supply store, but they don't usually have the brushes in the store that I want. And I'm just making excuses now. Anyway, that's what I did. Those are the choices I made. I'm tapping this back in here. So I have some brushes that are coming. Um, like I have never used, uh, some people call it a rigger. And so see, I'm getting a better point with my, my two right here. Um, or you might call it a script liner. It's a long skinny brush that I think will help me with the thin lines when I do trees, because you know I love trees. Yeah, I'm actually liking that more. I feel like I made these bigger than I intended to, potentially. I'm gonna do a short one over here. Did I have a point? I don't think so. I don't really think there was a point to what I was saying, other than use the best brush you have for the job. I think one more small one on this side is called for. What do you think? Like that. And you also could have them in front of each other, which I may go back and do. And then I'm kind of holding my brush sideways and just doing some kind of like back and forth. And obviously they're gonna bleed into each other. That's what you want. seems a weirdly darker at the top and I don't want that. Okay. Now I'm standing here with my arms crossed, just checking out, checking the scene, seeing if I feel happy with it. I do. I think I'm going to get some mostly clean water and kind of like soften the bottom here. There we go. And maybe even draw that out a little bit. I'm going to use switch over to my size six brush and just wet the end of it. I'm just going to brush some clean water on right here. Mostly clean water. What is happening with my brush? There we go. 
there is some sun, so you would most likely see some sort of shadow situation happening. Maybe not exactly like that, but okay. Uh, sun, trees, very good. We could tap in. It's probably gonna go back down a bit. That's fine. We'll add more. Add more. Um, we may add more pigment later. I don't know. All right, so I'm gonna continue to use that same color, which was a mixture of indigo with a little, if you have Payne's gray or black, just to darken it up a bit. You could even add, if you have um, a dark kind of green for this, uh, these that are on the front here, but I am trying to keep the palette of this overall kind of a blue tone, an indigo kind of tone. I'm gonna use, my size two to do the etching of the skeletons if you will of the trees and i liked this kind of thing that i had going which was like uh kind of like fingers like tall tallest close but not quite sorry i, I keep looking you know you would think i'd have a good plan before i started but that's not always the case. And then do I want it to be, I want it to, I don't want it to be all the way down here at the front. I do want it to be back a bit. So I'll start about here and just draw a tall line to about there. A little bit more, a little bit more. And then I'm going to continue using my size two brush and uh, sometimes pine needles at the top stick up a little more, give it a little more detail. I still want this to be a loose composition. Like these are fine and I'm not going to get a whole lot more detailed for these up close. And then the decision will have to be made. Um, am I going to add some sort of like snow situation to these or is it just going to be the trees. I don't know. You already know because you have seen the finished painting. I assume, <laughs> I assume I posted it on the video. Paint this scene with either snowy evergreens or not snowy evergreens. I am continuing to use my size two, but I'm probably going to switch over to my size six in a minute because Um, these will probably be too small. If your if your round brushes are good, you should be able to get a pretty good, uh, pretty fine point on them. I feel like mine are getting a little, a little sad. Okay. And as long as you use light pressure, though, you should be able to get a nice, fine point. And at this point, I. Think think my pine needles would flatten out a bit as the branches get bigger, as they get heavier. I have anti-hero stuck in my head right now. I'm trying very hard not to sing it out loud. Hopefully I haven't just gotten it stuck in your head. And it, this will go off the side of the page, which is what I wanted. So we have one. The only thing I don't like about these trees back here is that you can, I don't know. I don't want to get involved. I'm not going to get involved. I'm just going to leave it. I'm just going to leave it. I'm continuing here with my mixture, my indigo, black. I just mixed up a little more. I have this habit of not ever mixing up as much as I need and then not learning from that habit. So I'm always like, oh, I'll have enough. 
I'm actually going to dot a little more here into the center. I switch back over to my two. So this next tree is going to be right next to it, probably touching or close to touching. Um, and it's going to be a bit taller or maybe it'll be a little bit more in front. Maybe. Yeah, maybe it's a little bit more in front. I don't know if I put it far enough over, but I've committed to it. So let us, let us continue. too much on my brush which is why I didn't start right at the top I'm about to go back to it though so in my neck of the woods as I'm recording this it is getting close to the time when we will get a Christmas tree we usually get it the Saturday after Thanksgiving I never had an established time at all until I had a child and then I was like I want to make sure we do this when we do it I am one of those, uh, would you call me a purist? I don't like any sort of Christmas decorations at all until Thanksgiving has concluded. I think it probably has less to do with Thanksgiving and more to do with the fact that my birthday um, is either on Thanksgiving or right around Thanksgiving. This year it is the day before Thanksgiving. Next year it will fall on Thanksgiving sometimes it's the Friday after Thanksgiving or you know it's always like the sun the Saturday before Thanksgiving through the Friday after Thanksgiving depending on the year anyway um I I, I guess I just want proper attention <laughs> paid to my birthday and I don't want um Christmas to interfere with that also, I like to fully dedicate myself to Christmas when it's Christmas season. And I feel like if it's like if you had a piece of chocolate cake every single day for breakfast, chocolate cake would not seem very special or, or, or for dessert every day. You know what I mean? Like I want Christmas to be a concentrated amount of time and to not be diluted by other holidays and to... What is my point? <laughs> my point is give me all the Christmas, but not until after my birthday and Thanksgiving. And I'm not even that into Christmas. I love having Christmas tree. I love having the lights. Um, Christmas day is fine. I like, I, you know, as a parent, it's enjoyable to see your kid opening presents, but my my husband and I are both very um like mindfulness people and so with my daughter we're always like notice the way that your mind is is happy that you've gotten these new things and then notice how how quickly you your mind wants more new things which I don't think is a, a bad thing to teach a kid that, that your mind is not going to be satisfied um I mean, we're not saying this as she's opening presents like, you'll never be satisfied, but we do. Particularly, she likes this this game called Star Stable that you play on the computer and she always wants new horses and she gets really excited if she saved up enough star coins to get new horses. And then I just sort of gently point out like, you remember how you excited you were to get those new horses and you played with them a lot for a few days and then, or for a few weeks even, and look, now your mind wants more. The only way to find true peace is to be in the moment. Yes, I say things like that to my eight-year-old. And to you. <laughs> One of the reasons that art is so very wonderful is that creativity, apparently while you're being creative, you can't feel fear. And you know, fear is the main thing that our minds are throwing at us all, all damn day. So in the in the moment when you're concentrating, in the moment when you're composing something, in the moment when you're in it, you are just in the present moment. Plus you get to make something pretty. Okay, third tree. I'm gonna start this one right here. It's slightly further away and it's not gonna be as tall. 
either of the other ones. And as you can see, I've switched back to my... Whew, this is hurting my eyes. Okay. One of these days, I'm probably going to have to get bifocal um, contacts or... I don't know. I don't know. Don't make me think about it. I really love this color of the sky. I'm really feeling this blue and yellow palette. I know I haven't really described how I'm doing these trees, but I use my little skinny brush just do some branches back and forth, kind of at an upward angle. There are many different kinds of evergreen trees, obviously. So uh, if you're a botanist, you're probably like, well, what kind of tree is that supposed to be? That doesn't look like, or an arborist maybe, Bar botanist or arborist, you're probably like, what, like what, those, that pine needle shape is not right to be a Southern, I don't know. I see, I don't even, <laughs> I love nature, but I don't even know the names of trees. I'm working on it. My flower names I've gotten a lot better with because now I have a garden and I plant things and I save seeds and I'm very interested. So I have learned a lot. Plus one of my very closest friends is, a, she's a pharmacist, but I think in another life, she probably would have been some sort of botanist or something. And um, she's taught me a lot about what different things are. And... So, I mean, I know we just, we, we planted a um, rising sun red bud in our yard this year, and I really wanted one of those. I know our driveway is lined with Bradford pear trees, which are horrible, but we did not plant them there. They came with the house. Uh, I know we have silver maples in the backyard. Like, I'm learning trees, but I, I don't, I don't know them that well. I know these are evergreens. Don't ask me what kind of evergreens they are. I did not model them on an actual evergreen. So there. I probably could switch over to my size six now, but I'm so close to the bottom. I think I'm just gonna continue. And I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom that I did here, which is I don't have actually clean water. And I get some water that's as clean as I can. Kind of have a damp brush and I'm going to soften this line here. Soften, soften. You know, if it's in the snow, it's going to look a little softer. And then I'm also going to pull a little of the pigment this so here's the sun so it would be maybe casting a little bit of a shadow kind of this way there we go soften 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 and also put a little more pigment there we go okay all right now the deciding factor is this enough? Are we happy with this? Should I add in some other elements? Do I want to put snow on the branches? I want to thicken those branches a bit. I feel like there's not enough happening here. That I know. Okay. I am still here. I'm just standing and staring because I haven't quite decided. This is bothering me and I'm wondering like, should I add in some small birds? I do really like the sky and I do like the hint of bushes in the background. I am gonna take my size two brush with some more indigo. Do I wanna do that? Maybe I'll add some like little, like, I don't know what these would be, a little like vine, little maybe bush type things here. 
what are these? Don't ask me again. Like the botany. Just super, super subtle. Barely touching. Okay. All right, that added a little more interest. I like that. I'm adding a few more dark little spots in here. So one of the, the things I mentioned was snow. So how would you add snow? I would use this. There are lots of ways to, like you could mask off areas where you wanted there to be snow on the branches. Oh gosh, that sounds so incredibly complicated to me. I definitely would not be doing that. Um, so that the paper stays white, I, that, I would never do that. I just would not. Uh, some people, I guess, use gouache kind of like white paint. This is just this bleed proof white that you could easily touch some areas around and make it snowy, look snowy. I don't think I want to do that at this moment. I am definitely at a little bit of a stand here because I do not quite know what I want to do. I'm thinking about doing little teeny tiny because this just looks like a bird to me, but I also don't want to mess up what I've done. So I do think I'm going to practice. I'm going to grab a piece of watercolor paper if I can find one. I mean a scrap piece. Oh, I've got a lot of stuff here. My studio. The studio needs a cleaning. I swear I'm coming back. All right, here's a piece. Here's a piece. Uh, I'm gonna just add a little more black to the indigo mix that I already have. I've got my size two brush. And I'm just gonna practice like if I did a real thin, yeah, that's okay. And you could, I don't wanna say cheat, you could, um, you could use, if you wanted to, just a black, um, what is the word I'm thinking of? One of these, if you had these, you could use something like that. I do sometimes add in branches and other details with that afterwards. You could do that. Okay, wish me luck. I'm gonna put in a little bird right there. Put in another little bird right here. Another one over here. And then maybe one up here. Hopefully, I don't think my head's in the way. Okay. And maybe one more up here. Okay. I don't want to do any more. I don't want to mess anything up. I think my one thing that's still bothering me is these do not feel dark or present enough just because of the way that paint um, tends to dry a little bit lighter. So I am going to go back in and just touch around some of the same spots and just add. I should have started it at the top, <laughs> at the bottom. And then when this dries, it'll just have a little bit more oomph. So it seems up close and present. And as we are coming to a close here, I would love to see what you made. You can, if you want to put it on social, you can tag me at Jen Picicci, P-I-C-I-C-C-I, P-I-C-I-C-C-I, -I -I -C -C -I, and it's Jen with one N. Um, that's where you can mostly find me. I'm on, I'm on all the places. Okay, I'm not on TikTok. Actually, technically I am, but I stopped. I started and I stopped and I was like, this is not fun for me. I'm already on too, I'm in too many places. It just felt like a chore and I don't want spreading my artwork to the universe huh? oh, oh, to feel like a chore. I want it to be fun. So I'm 
So this turned out very differently than I was expecting. Sometimes I work from a photo that I've taken um, or a photo that I, I like that I have permission to paint or I'm not gonna use or to sell or whatever. And then I try to stick with that. But in this case, I had an idea and then um, it changed as, as we were going. So I'm glad that I just went with it. Am I done? Probably. That's pretty good. Snowy morning. Snowy sky morning. I hope you've enjoyed this and I'll see you next video.